Good afternoon. Um, first of all, uh, as always, if you don't hear me, please let me know by a message. If uh, you are hearing me well, we can uh, carry on with our today's lecture. The question, uh, as you were possibly remembering in very general terms, was uh, to try to understand whether substituting a plastic obtained from petrol, from oil, uh, then we call it the petroplastic with a bioplastic would be uh, feasible. Of course it is, uh, at least in general terms. And uh, whether the use of waste to produce that bioplastic would be um, also of interest in terms of sustainability. So we have two questions. We have the feasibility, we can do something, and the suitability, it works in terms of sustainability. Feasibility, uh, you may remember that we can substitute some plastic with other plastics which are obtained from polysaccharides. We, in particular, we substitute uh, polyethylene, polypropylene. Um, then I don't tell you again the differences between bio-based materials then, uh, then uh, biodegradable materials obtained from oil. Then we have bioplastics obtained from bio raw materials, biological raw materials. I'm going slowly because the, you, you may remember that the difference between these terms is sometimes a subtle and it's important to use the right word, the right term. And also the, this kind of nomenclature is uh, in evolution over time during the last few years um, because it creates difficulties. Also bioplastics uh, is, uh, can represent a number of different things. Okay, today I'm going to, um, to tell you what's happening in the last few years. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, lecture will be also an introduction to the following one, which will be in, uh, on Monday. So uh, we try to concentrate now on the fact that we have a waste problem. Basically, we produce too much waste. You may remember what Greta Thunberg is saying, uh, which might be naive in a sense, but it reflects a reality. The amount of waste, not just of plastic, is uh, uh, overwhelming. And since it is overwhelming, we need to give another possibility to waste. We can produce energy from waste. We can produce fuel, not directly energy, but fuel. Uh, is different, of course, this is different. You can, you can incinerate waste, and then you produce energy, and ashes, of course. But you can also produce a uh, biogas or biomethane, then you produce a fuel, and from this, you produce energy again of different nature. You can produce uh, thermal energy, mechanical energy, and so on. You can transform that thermal energy into mechanical energy, chemical energy, and so on. Um, this is very general. The, um, going into um, the layman view, so the person uh, who would like to use bioplastic, there are a few things which uh, are declared and we we can be sure of that. First of all, 
bioplastics cannot be composted and composted in your own uh, field in your own allotment you will, will will need a mechanical operation so you will need to mash it to grind it and uh, in small pieces small fragments then you can be pretty sure you are not able to use as a compost in your plate so it, so you mix for example with cow dung if you have cow dung you then you mix bioplastic um fragment and well it's not this is not sufficient you would, would probably need an industrial composting system because you need to control the ph condition then the temperature etc and uh, and after that it is important mm -hmm. to remember that um, even if you go to an industrial composting system, in some cases, there have been some um, concerns, some uh, people complaining, some complaints as well, about people saying, that, well, I buy this compost in which there is some bioplastic and it doesn't work very well, as in my field. Um, which is the objective of this study this is not a very um, a very uh, high level study it is a quite basic study which was done in an india university and well it's, i'm not dismissing indian researchers because i i collaborate with a number of them they are very good but this was in was on purposely a simple study the purpose of this study, I'm showing these two graphs, which are two simple graphs as well. The purpose of this study is I buy a bioplastic down the market. One of the bioplastics you can buy of uh, Amazon, a PLA, polylactic acid, I buy of it. Then I, I have an industrial facility and I compare in that industrial facility that um well, an industrial facility of small dimension so not a big one and i would like to compare the compare the composting ability of the bioplastic i bought down the market with one bioplastic i produce it myself you know that uh, I can produce bioplastic from starch, and so in practical terms, uh, these materials are intended generally as thermoplastic starch. I can produce bioplastic with any kind of starch with a plasticizer. The most popular one is glycerol, but you can use sorbitol, xylitol, and uh, even honey would work. Um, and uh, if you go down the, down the internet, you find a number of experiments that are like that. What happens there is that I compare these two bioplastics, let's call uh, both of them, let's call them bioplastics. One was uh, both an industrial bioplastic, a commercial bioplastic CB. The other one was a potato peel bioplastic, because you know, potato peel, uh, even if you if you work in a restaurant, uh, one of the most uh, common waste, unless you buy the potatoes already unpeeled, but uh, in general terms, potato peel is a large waste containing some starch, and uh, therefore you are able to uh, make a bioplastic out of it. They tried composting and they tried also vermicomposting. Vermicomposting is composting with worms. There are some worms, earth, earth worms in particular, which have a number, in reality there are a number of types of worms, which um, you can use to vermicomposting the material, so to, co to compost not just by the action that is done in the soil, but also 
by the action which is uh, obtained when feeding this worm. And vermicomposting may be more affecting than composting itself, because composting itself, you have microorganisms um, which uh, you may control which kind of microorganisms are in there, because you know the bulk of compost, what is formed of, for example, it might be cow dung, or it might be uh, simply uh, organic waste from home, uh, or a mixture of a different waste. You may control that there are kind of microorganisms possible down there. Um, vermicomposting is a more uh, exigent in a sense because you need to have some pH condition and some soil temperature, etc., which are uh, agreeable from the world. The world would like that and would be happy to them to grow in, in that. Um, so what did they found out? They found out that um, there was no way of uh, um, of uh, having a weight loss into um, the, their soil. The trick was that, is that they tried composting. They had a small um, composting uh, system, but they tried to um, to work with the soil to uh, create the compost uh, uh, to work in the soil that was in that place in England. And they found out that there was no way of composting the commercial plastic in a month. Time. Of course, uh, eventually, I think in two, three, four months, that would be um, different, that would have been different. Um, because uh, uh, if the commercial plastic is classified as compostable, it should of sort of work in any case. The evidence was that their self-produced bioplastic with potato peel absorbed much more water, which might be a problem if you want to use it as, uh, as plastic. In fact, it is a problem. Uh, you may remember that in um, you may remember that as ab about commercial products, there are products which are obtained from what from potato, from potato peel, peel or parts of uh, uh, potatoes which are unsuitable for um, selling. So in some cases, you know that and down the supermarket. If the potato has a strange shape or if it is too small, uh, etc., uh, it's usually not sold but thrown away. Or if it has damaged parts. So uh, they created that, uh, they produced that uh, potato peel bioplastic, and it worked better. It worked better in composting, and it worked better in vermicomposting. Uh, another important thing is that bioplastics, this demonstrates a couple of things. The uh, first thing is that bioplastics, commercial bioplastics, start composting very late. It's first, you have a kind of uh, bio-deterioration de of the surface of the fragment, which may take quite some time. And then the fragment remains as it is. In fact, you may remember the experiment of someone which, which has uh, uh, done a hole, excavated a, a hole, and then they, they put some uh, bamboo bioplastic force down uh, the hole. And after some time, after a few days, a few weeks, they were still about the same. Then, of course, they start decomposing, but they start decomposing with a kind of, uh, well, Chemist people would would uh, would understand that, but I hope also the other ones. There is a kind of uh, energy of activation. They they start by the deteriorating, so only the surface is affected. And at a certain point, they sort of be in, in, in suddenly disappear or decompose in a much smaller fragment in a matter of a few days. That was happened. What happened to commercial? 
what's the point of this study? The point of this study is that uh, they were questioning the fact that a commercial bioplastic would work in any environment. This is probably not the case. We already know that we need a big industrial uh, plant to make really compost out of bioplastic or commercial bioplastic. And also that, uh, well, if I am able to uh, create a bioplastic with my um, potato peels, just an, as, the, as an example of waste, starch is present in thousands of different crops and different plants. So it's not just a matter of using potato. They use the potato because they had potato, and it was easier to, to do that. So, uh, well, the criticism about bioplastics, commercial bioplastics, are not completely um, un, uh, unsuitable. Well, there is there are some there is some criticism which is good practice. On the other side, I am not pushing you to produce your own uh, bioplastics. I would like to be proven wrong that uh, commercial bioplastic works as a composting, uh, first for composting materials. This might be also a case. But let's see another study. Um, and trying to understand better what's the matter with thermicomposting and bioplastic. There are a number of worms which feed on organic waste. Organic waste means that you have organic carbon, basically. And in the end, they are able to mineralize it. So the fecula from these worms, it, uh, the excrement are inorganic. Once again, um, there was, uh, they tried this kind of study uh, in composting, not in uh, thermicomposting, but just in industrial composting system. Um, there is an important thing which might, you might consider a trick, but this is how it works. Uh, bioplastics are not composted as the end their own in industrial systems, in industrial, in industrial science, but bioplastic fragments are in the commercial bioplastic fragments are inserted in a prepared compost. In a compost which is already sort of prepared work. In that case, um, I am not going deep into the result, but the important fact is that this study, which was done in 2016 here in Italy, and uh, what what happens is that they have introduced one or two percent test B is 1%, test C is 2%, test A is pure compost. And what happens is that they decompose because in, uh, the compost is able to, to drain, to, um, to um, carry the, um, the rest of the fragments of bioplastic carry to the decomposition. So it works. In two months, they were already, they have already lost around 50% of space. And uh, they were supposed to get in six months, in 90 to 95% of waste. And uh, so they work. They work in a commercial bioplastic, work in very small quantities in a prepared composite, in a prepared compost, in an industrial composite, composting soil. Okay. So in a, a small amounts, it can be introduced in a prepared compost, industrial composting site, and it is decomposed as from E and the team for we do. Okay. Um, this 
raises another problem that uh, in practical terms, uh, if we produce a huge amount of uh, bioplastics, if the situation stays like that, we may not solve much. Also, bioplastics might be a further problem if you, we are able to compost it only in such small quantities. There is no way out. Well, there is a way out. The way out is that bioplastics could be recycled. You can avoid the production of uh, compostable bioplastics, making the thickness higher, and at the end of life, try to recycle it. And you can recycle it in, in, in practical terms. It's not um, that difficult to recycle it in, because it's a thermoplastic. Polylactic acid is it's a thermoplastic. You can keep it and you can uh, remake another plastic or mix to the new plastic as it happens with polypropylene. You get the recycled polypropylene produced in a stream of new polypropylene. This can be done and it can be done also one, two, possibly even three times. So you may use different lines of the recycled process. This, this works also with polylactic acid, which is quite done. And it was tried and it worked. So uh, compostability might not be the best option for polylactic acid. For commercial bioplastic, on the other side, we have lots of waste and we could make bio, bioplastic with waste. We could make bioplastic with waste. With waste, of course, that, that has starch. There is another big stream of researchers about uh, making bioplastics from protein-based um, waste materials. For example, even egg yolk, egg yolk the white part of the jelly or, or white is part of the egg white, the egg white uh, of all rather than the yolk, um, would uh, uh, allow you to um, create or uh, thrown away eggs and therefore you can use either uh, the white or the yolk or you can use milk waste. Apart from that, you will see that the situation is much uh, goes much much further than that. Anyway, uh, the main sentence would be: we can produce bioplastics from waste, and this is going to be compostable. Even well, compostable and even vermicompostable, possibly. We have problems into uh, to composting uh, organic, whatever kind of organic. For example, we have a problem with green waste. Green waste is the waste that you um, take from when pruning the plants, for example, or when the plants come at end of life. You have uh, leaves, the grass, branches. You have grass when you uh, you mow your um, your your um, lawn. You have uh, and uh, and the, in reality, when you cut your globe, you cut your grass. Then you have the uh, yard, which means kind of soil with some green uh, uh, material. Um, and um, as a matter of fact, what happens is that you have seen the problem in the previous slide. I uh, passed over that, but the, the, the real, real problem was that uh, compost is supposed to have uh, a little amount of uh, carbon. And therefore, a ratio between carbon and nitrogen, which is not that high. We could put a lot of bioplastic in our compost. But then the carbon nitrogen carbon nitrogen ratio, which is the ratio that allow microorganisms to feed of it on it, that 
that controls that feeding of microorganisms on compost, part of compost. Uh, if it is too high, then, uh, um, well, they, it creates problem in the action of microorganisms and it creates problem of, on fertilizing effects. So uh, you can see that already with uh, um, waste, we have some problem. We have some problem because we we have leaves, branch, and even worse with the branch, leaves, yard, and even worse with grass and branches with the, that have a very high uh, organic carbon uh, percent. And the CN ratio, well, might go, well, the best one possibly is to be the, the branches, the branches is quite a reasonable one. Uh, and um, of course, there is a, the problem is that all these four parts, I'm trying to synthesize, but uh, you may be more, um, you may have more differences because of this event, which kind of trees, which kind of uh, uh, leaves, etc. Um, the thickness of the leaves, etc. Uh, and even if you mash all that, you find out that um, there is always a large variability, for example, between cellulose, uh, hemicellulose, and uh, lignin. The three polysaccharides, which uh, um, basically compose the structure of a tree, most of the structure of a tree. And uh, uh, the main difference is that cellulose is hydrophilic and uh, uh, lignin is hydrophobic. Uh, hemicellulose is in between, is less structural than cellulose. Um, apart from uh, these uh, um, differences, there are some parameters which are important. For example, volatile uh, solids. Volatile solids are the solids which can be transformed into carbon by burning them, by ignition. You burn, there is always an, an ignition point for a material containing uh, uh, organic waste and uh, uh, food waste. And I burn it. And of course, uh, this is another parameter which is uh, quite important because uh, it shouldn't be that the, it shouldn't be that uh, variable as well because as well it, it creates some uh, differences. Uh, you may understand also one thing because people working with green waste say to you, well, not everything of that burns that well, because you may mix up with, uh, um, for example, silica, sand might be uh, around. You might have some uh, some parts which, in fact, are, are, are been already, um, been already transformed into carbon. May have, if the, uh, the wood is very uh, old, you might find found that uh, there's much possibility to, to burn. You, you, you may have some, uh, in the case of leaves, leaves might be already completely dry. They have some jelly substances and so on, which in reality, they tend to, to become paper instead of that providing a, a transformation into carbon. They, they might become vapor or, or or the bird to get to the ignition point, the fire step. For the fire step, you may uh, find, that, find that you have lost a lot of material. In fact, what they say is that not everything of this uh, uh, green waste, uh, green waste is suitable for incineration. In other words, you wouldn't put too many leaves for obvious reasons, you don't put too many leaves in your chimney if you want to make fire uh, or in your stove because uh, it, uh, it has not many uh, volatile uh, solids. Um, again, 
there is uh, there are some other considerations to, to make of course if humus is less than total waste because uh, some part of waste humus is what is created uh, by the activities of plants animals and microorganisms uh, you might have some inorganic material already like as i was saying the sand uh, those minerals etc green waste is waste which is not collected in a selective way not like plastic or safety bottles collected in a quite not selective way so you may have sand clay soap or whatever which again is a problem so uh, in, uh, this is promising. This is promising to make material. This might be promising to make compostable. Of course, by mash, by mashing, by treating them, by try to be more selective. Ah, you can do that once you want to make material. Again. The comparison between uh, bioplastics and other materials that happened in 2016. And uh, uh, here, they, you know that these ideas are not completely new. We have been, um, we have been interested to develop the development of the commercial bioplastics. Please, uh, let's be clear about that. Uh, polylactic acid. A very short, short and not very branched polymer, short chain polymer, and not very tough, so not able to withstand the uh, cracks and so on, development of cracks. Um, not very able to be cut in a proper way, was existing uh, already in the 20s. There was a, a patent from Nippon. In, 1928. Then uh, we went up and down because this was an idea which was interesting, uh, but in reality there was the huge development of a plastic industry, of conventional plastic industry, uh, oil. Oil was reasonably cheap. Also, you had a number of products producing from oil, and so plastic fit into the picture. Um, in another sense, uh, also bacterial cellulose is not that new. Bacterial cell cellulose uh, comes back to the discovery from Pasteur, who was, uh, found out that there was a, it was able to synthesize some uh, polysaccharides from some waste and uh, um, from, from some waste of the agri-food industry. Particularly, he was studying a lot the waste for the production of wine. So, uh, even in the 20s, 30s, DHA, the polyhydroxy alkanoid, was already there in a, I would say, embryonal sort of uh, dimension uh, because it wasn't the, uh, already a material uh, able to be developed. Also, because there wasn't much uh, exigency of uh, plastic fields, plastic bags, and so on. So uh, it stayed as a quite expensive material and more as a, a, an interesting experiment. But um, coming back to the study in 2016, what, uh, what uh, the point that FEDA tries to make is the comparison between different materials. Uh, in vermicomposting, so uh, bioplastic, as we know, is not very good. They both, and again, one bioplastic down the market, and it wasn't very good. It was better than fabric. If you get a fabric, in a fabric, well, in this case, it was a polyester fabric, so it wasn't a, a very uh, you, you wouldn't expect much action from the, the world, from the world in general terms. Then there are, as we were saying last time, there are some uh, particular bacteria that attack also um, petroplastic, uh, the polyester. 
Um, what happens is that waste works much better. Paper, paper, well, it's quite obvious because paper is full of cellulose and um, earth will be upon cellulose. Um, kitchen waste, yes, because there is a large amount of uh, organic uh, materials. Um, then there is some uh, um, some sort of uh, different sort of words were said in this way. Of course, you can discuss uh, in this experiment there is some aspects that would be discussed, for example, uh, changing the type of kitchen waste. But you know that typical kitchen, a typical kitchen waste. I would suggest that in that particular kitchen waste, there, were, there weren't many uh, holes, so many ceramics, which are basically already uh, transformed into carbon. So um, organic carbon, so basically uh, you, you weren't able to uh, dissolve that. Um, but if you don't have uh, many works into there, you can imagine that kitchen waste and paper are very attractive. Even lamps wool, uh, lamps wool is slightly attractive. Um, then they measured, as we were discussing last time, they were measuring the average soil pH. The pH wasn't very different. They took an about neutral soil. As you may remember, it's not the uh, rule of that soil is neutral. Soil is either basic or acid, most cases, and it might become even heavily acid or basic. Might go from 3.5 to 10.5, so quite a large range of the pH. And um, <clears throat> also in this uh, in this uh, way, they measure respiration. Respiration, as always, as we we were discussing last time. Respiration means that you measure the um, possibility to uh, breath. Therefore, when you breath, you take in oxygen and you take out carbon dioxide. And uh, that's what the works do, but, uh, do as well. And uh, and there are different levels of measurement of this respiration. You can, uh, you can consider the substrate in use of respiration with different kind of feeding, feeding waste, where water or vermity, vermity is a kind of uh, uh, like this, a mixture with uh, water, some, some other, um, the exciting substances on the sugar, so basically it's like a lot of work. And or you can uh, consider feeding or not feeding, feeding uh, some different feeding parts, you can feeding more or less, you can have them different patterns. They wanted to study the, what happens with the, uh, about the respiration, so there were different things. Not much differences on lamps uh, wool, but considerable differences in the, the absolute value for. Uh, um, so uh, the respiration could go in kitchen waste. Um, some data are uh, a little skeptical, for example, kitchen waste. They have done a kind of standard deviation, but in reality, some will. Uh, zero, of course, there was uh, in some cases there was no inspiration. Kitchen waste, so was not very effective in terms of respiration of the world because then you have the basal respiration. Basal respiration is the respiration which is uh, the one, apart from the numbers, the numbers as always might be questionable. The important thing is that. Uh, Many many ways the bi bioplastic allow works well. is It's good for making the leaf, the, the worms, but the worms are not able to attack it. 
for some time. Then it decomposes after a long time. They, they is a, a different path in terms of, of, of um, decomposing. Um, Basal respiration, in terms of basal respiration, uh, is very limited, but this is a characteristic of, of vermicomposting that makes it interesting. The fact that the earthworm needs very little substances, very little oxygen in terms of two oxygen and substances people. And in fact, um, they may be uh, left without feeding and in, in uh, an atmosphere with, uh, uh, which is moist with distilled water, and they uh, survive with very little respiration. We have a basal respiration which is OK, so uh, to summarize that, the bioplastics uh, is, is, is good for ma making earth work live but it's not the composer, at least not in a very short time. Other experiments, uh, in other, what is interesting is that we have a number of types, larger type, number of types of waste. And in practice, we can um, see what we have mm -hmm. available and uh, give it to the worms to feed on. For example, here there was a study on maize and, uh, well, on sugar bagasse and banana skin, but there was a similar study on, on uh, uh, banana skin and maize powder. Um, you know, these three examples, maize powder, sugar cane bagasse and banana skin stem, the pseudo stem, pseudo stem uh, are not, uh, are not a, just a case. They are definitely interesting because they belong to three big productive systems. The banana productive system, which is 95% based on fruit. Then there is something on banana fiber that is kind of local phenomenon of some kind. Uh, then you have the base, which is the even larger uh, productive system, which involves a number of transfers. Of uh, maize, uh, you can make flour, you can make starch, you can use grain, and so on. But uh, a large part of the plant is not used. Powder, which is uh, um, and the corn cob as well, uh, which is the internal part of the. Uh, and uh, when when you take the grain, you, you need to make the, last, the internal mm -hmm. part of the crop. I don't remember the name. Yeah, mm, apart from that, then you have uh, sugar cane bagasse. Um, sugar cane bagasse, again, is a large productive system. Then you have sugar, you can produce ethanol. Then uh, it comes into the And even of uh, plastic, you may remember that you can produce sugar cane. Okay, and um, all these uh, systems um, produce lots of waste, lots of waste of uh, no value because basically, uh, when uh, the value of uh, their product is very high value, very product, then um, obvious, it's obvious that. Uh, uh, your waste becomes a hindrance, a problem, an issue, and you want to get rid of it. Um, I'm not going to details of the of how the work was done, but basically you have a control, a control with no worms, and a system with worms, and uh, you have a waste to soil ratio which is uh, uh, to be controlled. Of course, there is a point at which you have to stop. The idea of every study on waste is that you need to use as much waste as possible before the disaster occurs because, because of course you can start with five to five waste to soil and then you go up and up and up and at a certain point 
you may find out that you find out that in ten words you are not able to put it as efficiently as you can. This is the same when you try to introduce, for example, waste into plastic. This is a trend as well. Also in petroplastic, they try to introduce waste. For example, I, I may consider it's not it's not a joke. Huh? These things are. are Eggshell fragments, polypropylene, some amount of eggshell polypropylene uh, may oxidate also. And at a certain point, properties drop, properties of polyethylene drop. But I am reducing the price because eggshells uh, come from it. So they are great. This is the, on the same principle here. The important thing is that I try different ratios. Um, of course, I have simplified the problem because if I take just waste from banana, for example, only banana two of them, uh, so so the uh, part the part of the is a source of the trunk is uh, softer than. And uh, uh, all I, I take just to make both of what to run to the first cost. Uh, in reality, uh, I control the type of waste. It's not like a green waste uh, was collected. Or, uh, not like green waste, you know how green waste is collected. There is, there is people going around and pruning, and they are pruning different or cutting trees in normal cases. They put all together whether the, 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 the pine, the oak, or whatever uh, together. So there the control is much more difficult. Here the control is better. Uh, having said that, I need to control the ratio between the waste and the soil and see the yeah. Okay, um, let's spend the uh, following part of this lecture in trying to uh, explain you what, what we are going to say next time. Because it's a world which is developing. So this is the situation. This is the main situation. There was a very interesting study, which I can provide. Uh, I'll try to put in a web page. The study from, but you find it in the university in college. And this uh, Sharma et al. is the author, uh, main author is Sharma. And uh, this study came out in 2019, so last year. And um, well, this is a scheme which is very, very general. And it says that um, we have three options. We have three options for whatever we consider, uh, say, organic, coming from the agrofood. Um, in general terms, because, for example, uh, you have the uh, battery waste, which comes from the agrofood system, but a source of organic. There's a number of parts which are inorganic. Say clothes, say bones, and uh, that's this is a detail to make you understand that it's not okay. We have we haven't thought at all, but we are on the way of trying to understand how it works. So we have three options, which creates to us some very mm, some pollution. All the three options create one contribution. If we stick to greenhouse effect, to the production of carbon dioxide, we produce carbon dioxide by incineration, by landfilling. Then we have also other problems in landfilling, for example, water leaching, which we don't have in composting, for example. In incineration, we have production of oil. We don't have in two other. Unless the landfilling site is burned at the time. Well, there is always a risk of being burned. Um, consider the cell combustion in this case. Oh, it's existing. 
Um, having said that, we have a number of options for valorization. What the guy, which is uh, was very comforting, uh, that corn uh, corn plant uh, was intending to have the kind of valorization. Of course, the valorization can be at different levels. I can put into compost. I can produce materials which are compostable, which would be an even larger valorization, and I can make a number of things. Environmental pollution still there, but if I produce energy from generation, or if I produce biofuel from composting, uh, or electricity again from then I can valorize the value to my to my uh, weight. Okay. I can produce fertilizers provided the N ratio is uh, is not enough. that high. I can produce biosurfactants. Biosurfactants are interesting now. They are it's not just that they are used as detergents. You could make a biosurfactant. Now there are a lot of people around which uh, create uh, soaps or detergents by their own. This is a good, still a niche option, but it has some value. What I'm saying, although it's uh, much more uh, aggressive. In the sense of, uh, of uh, being uh, um, fighting against the problem of waste, is the fact that bisulfactant can be used into to provide some remediation of soil or polluted soil to uh, take away the oil. That's what detergents do, basically, uh, taking away um, oil traces. But um, on soil, you can, uh, can remediate the and, uh, and of course, improve the quality of soil to be cultivated, built upon or to use natural sources. Um, and then there is bioplastic. And uh, since we cannot do everything, I would like to concentrate on that possibility of bioplastic, of producing bioplastic. Of all that waste, all that general waste. Uh, Sharma was good enough, and his co-authors were good enough to try to collect a number of examples and possibilities of what we can do with this kind of uh, material, waste material. And you will see that the situation is quite, uh, in a sense, complicated. In another sense, it's promising. These are examples of uh, bioactive compounds from the agro, agro uh, Bioactive means that we have some um, components, some chemicals even, which have a uh, biological interest, which have, uh, can have a biological action, even if we can reuse the um, but in some cases, they are waste which cannot uh, cannot be consumed, but they could, they could be useful for the production of biofuel. Uh, I would like to be clear about that. Some of these things have already been done, and some are under experimentation. Uh, let's have a look to all this. Let's have a look to all this. And, uh, um, some uh, uh, have also an interest, for example, of coloring the dye. Um, or some, uh, some have been used for bioplastic. You can see around here. I wouldn't read, of course, as always, I wouldn't read the uh, table. But in some cases, we find, for example, um, you can find chitin, which is a biopolysaccharide. You can make that. 
and they will stand on all the presentation in the past. Uh, then uh, there is biogas in here. We can intend to discard what is not inherent to bioplastic. So um, let's concentrate with bioplastic. I would like to produce a thermo plastic starch, or I would like to produce a protein based bioplastic. Uh, what I will present you next week is uh, trying to sort out these studies and to connect. Let's try, let's see where I can get from this. Some are used as dyes, uh, some are used as directly as possible for either from starch or from the The um, so called bioplastic, not bio based, not, uh, not bioplastic from oil, but bioplastic from biological. Chemicals, by biological origin chemicals, are either from starch or from coal. Here you can see a number of starch sources, uh, all of all of similar poly similar polysaccharides like pectin, and you can see also you can see also chitin, which uh, which is an animal saccharide. Then you can have uh, um, some others which, uh, which are a bit more aside, like phenols. Phenols are an origin for conventional plastic, and it's more a kind of bio-based plastic. Anyway, what I'll do, I'll take all this and try to show you the picture of what has been done and what could be done using this way Starting from that table, I like that table because it is rather uh, looking looking at that. Uh, that I could say that there are a number of uh, items which are missing. But anyway, the biggest industries are, are there. The biggest industries you can see the types of food, types of food are the biggest in terms of conduct consumption. Uh, and uh, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, possible ways uh, and of non negligible amounts uh, which are which are produced or from, from that, and uh, they are interested as well. Uh, I would like to concentrate on bioplastics so not just because I'm interested in that, but also because we can easily see that. Uh, if we try to make a picture, a complete picture, you can produce from dyes, dyes to drugs, to even um, fuels, uh, basically anything. And then there are biosurfactants and so on. So we try to stick to bioplastics. And you will see that there, there is already a lot. That has been done and a lot which can be done. Uh, enzymes are present as well, we can speculate, uh, which are used in the apple juice as well. In any case, uh, uh, every industrial process is not waste. Even if you produce enzymes or uh, add the fermentation of apple juice. I add the presentation, you find that a number of enzymes or large amount of enzymes is at the end of at the end of the day. Uh, because uh, they are always produced in excess and uh, there is always a question of uh, food processing industry has this lot of this uh, quality of being very controlled. On the other side, being being very controlled means being lots of waste and lots of discard. Lots of discarded materials. As I was making the example for potatoes, uh, probably the potato with a strange, strange shape is edible, but it's not packaged. And the end of the day is the same thing with the same package. The last one um, gives you 
to an idea of something which has already been done. And so gives you a hint, gives me a hint of what uh, could be looked at. For example, uh, the PHB, you can see some sources of PHB. Some of this we know it already. The K molasses, the molasses are uh, full of sugar. They are, they are from when we produce the uh, sugar from sugar cane, we make this kind of molasses, which are not really the kind of um, sort of jelly. I think it's, it's a solution, basically. And the uh, solution, but very viscous uh, molasses. And it's used a lot in the in the end, we want to control about the, the reology of the body, the way the molasses is uh, flowing and uh, the control over the quality of the final sugary product and so on. They are using a lot, for example, sugary drinks. But of course, the uh, sugary drink uh, is not. Um, sure, I think mean that, that that also have a control over us. Okay, I think that we are all about there because we you never we can see some of the bacteria that you have already heard of for fermentation or um, example like the penicillin, which is a bacterium. Common, a common one, which has a number, a very long one. And uh, uh, the waste cooking olive oil, olive oil they, they even have some, someone, has, oh, I'm sure, has already told you that we cannot throw away the waste cooking olive oil in normal, um, normal uh, or down the sink. We cannot throw it down the sink and we cannot uh, uh, throw it in. Uh, even even um, together with other 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 fluids, we put it as a special waste, and you can make uh, bi bio biofuel and so on. Um, so this concentrates a little bit more on biofuel than on uh, bioplastic. There is something about DH DHP, but um, apart from that. I'm sure that biofuels is, has a larger added value than bioplastics. But we need to concentrate on our problem. Our problem is how can I substitute petroplastic with bioplastic to make it work in substitution in terms of sustainability and in terms of added value and the use of waste. Since we are, we have plenty of time already. A possible way. Having said that, uh, I think I we, we can we can stop here. Uh, I will present you on Monday with a number of examples of how things were done, and because in some cases, you know. These experiments with waste come together with an LTA evaluation. So to say that it is more sustainable, our plastic produced from waste is more sustainable better than a plastic produced from oil, I need to provide a application of that all over the land. Their land. Their life means reproduction. Reproduction means the production of the raw material. If the raw material is the waste, it's already something. It's already an advantage because if the raw material is waste, I don't have to produce it because it's already there. I don't have to produce it and make it happen. So yeah, you have reproduction, production of the raw material, and all the operations that leads to material the available to you. Then you have the, then you have the service, and the service means also that 
if I am able to produce something that lasts more time, that will serve the system. It will serve the system longer. At, at, if all the other conditions are the same, the service of my plastic, the life of my plastic, longer, then I can say it is more sustainable. In this sense, we are perfectly right to tie to get rid of these or the single use plastic. Then you have end of life. End of life means what are the options? Can I recycle it? Can I compost it? Or do I need to burn it? I would uh, exclude the possibility of landfilling it without any disease at all possible, as required by the regulation. So the landfilling sites are very bad. It could be Okay, so uh, see you on uh, Monday at 11. Or as always, please feel free to email me. Uh, someone has already done, I, I might answer uh, soon. If you have some curiosity, want to find any paper, any of the ones which I mentioned, and you find it. Uh, please again write me get or, or I may add one of these papers. So uh, see you on uh, Monday. Uh, have a nice uh, have a nice week ahead and uh,